glad to see you here uh, because um, we at the Danube Institute are very proud of the succession of lectures on Jan Pachotchka, um, which we've had really must be for almost a year now, David, and uh, which the great, which the first five were, were by our distinguished fellow, um, David Dusenbury, author of a number of books, the one which you can usefully buy at the moment uh, is the one I will mention, which is, that, which is The Innocence of Pontius Pilate. But the Oxford University Press, I think, is about to publish your next book, um, which I think is The Politics of Jesus Christ. Is that accurate? Very close. A, a political life of Jesus. Political life of Jesus. Something very badly needed because there are many um, pirated bad versions uh, uh, going uh, available. Um, so we're, we're proud of these, uh, this series of lectures, um, which obviously were um, um, sort of a caviar uh, for the general. And um, we are in the, uh, um, we're discussing among ourselves how best to package the entire series in a way that um, makes it possible for the, for the scholar and for the uh, 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 general interest uh, reader and and, and uh, I would say, the, so to speak, the armchair philosopher or the, um, uh, the intellectual at the supper table to, um, to, to continue to discuss and debate the writings of a very significant figure. Now, uh, as I say, David's, um, D David has, uh, has done uh, us proud by these lectures. And, uh, and this, so to speak, is the cherry on the top of the cake. Uh, we're very de delighted to have um, a such a distinguished scholar uh, ending the series and uh, and and addressing. I was on the, the, the title. I see. Is there? I was. I, I thought the title was going to be. Um, is there a place for Christianity in Europe? Which I would have said is in Latin um, what we call a num rather than a non a question. It's expecting the answer no. <laughs> but uh, that, of course, may not be the answer that our speaker tonight gives us. And, uh, and so that's something which I'm looking forward to very much indeed, because the situation of Christians in Europe, particularly uh, in politics, but not only in politics, but in the whole cultural life of Europe, which was, after all, it, for 2,000 years, well, I suppose we start a bit later than the uh, than the crucifixion for a thousand years, Christianity was the culture of Europe. And even today, people who don't think of themselves in any way as Christian and are actually hostile to it are nonetheless steeped in Christian assumptions and betray themselves um, again and again by the way in which they stumble into what they regard as fallacies, um, but which nonetheless uh, uh, provide the structure of their thought. Um, our speaker is an extremely, as I say, distinguished academic. His, uh, I've just checked the title of your book since I'm not sure I got David's, the title of David's books right. Um, yes, um, your, uh, your doctoral dissertation um, on, on Patochka appeared uh, in well, two years ago, um, in, uh, published by New York University Press. And you won the um, Emerging Scholars Theological Book Prize presented by the European Society for Catholic Theology, a very high honor. Um, and of course, now you're in Vienna at the Institute of Philosophy, the University of Vienna. Um, so I'm looking forward very much to, to this exploration of, uh, of the title, the subject, through the prism of Patochka's ideas. Um, now, uh, we have to think, as you may already have been told by David, uh, Professor uh, uh, Balash Mezai has not been able to uh, attend. We're very fortunate indeed to have an old friend, uh, of not only of the Institute, but of this particular series. This is not the first time you've been a commentator on this. Um, and uh, Peter Pashta, the editor of the distinguished um, Budapest Cultural Journal, uh, also good. Um, we hope, obviously, since you played such an important role, Peter, that also good may notice these uh, these lectures. 
But of course, we can't demand that. Uh, <laughs> but 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 welcome, and uh, and I look forward to to first of all the lecture, secondly to Peter's comments, and then finally to the what I think will be in a very lively exchange of uh, of um, ideas from the floor as well. Uh, I think I just mentioned briefly a moment ago, but I'll just reiterate it now. We very much want to find a way of giving a permanent shape to the lectures that series launched by David and now crowned by this uh, occasion. Um, I want to make sure that we find, with the help of my colleague David, uh, to um, we want to make sure that this is packaged in a video, uh, in a video, what's the word I want? Um, um, video wise way, um, uh, so that um, it, it is of permanent um, use to scholars and to the wider and to the general reader. So, um, and finally, of course, we exist to explore ideas freely and um, I hope entertainingly uh, in the Institute. That's why we're here. Um, we are grateful you've. Uh, come to this occasion and we'll come to others. But the really key thing is that in uh, Budapest, we are, we are getting serious attention to the most important ideas about our culture, and we want to ensure that the people in this room are only the first beneficiaries. Others will benefit later. So thank you so much for coming. May I invite you to take the floor. And then I'm surrendering entirely the position of chairman to David. Okay. To the topic, uh, let me say that after Christianity, Jan Patochka and the future of Europe is a part of a, of a long project of mine. I'm just finishing a book with the title Christianity After Christendom, which uh, tackles not only on Patochka, but on the meaning of Christianity after the end of a certain period of Christianity or certain certain shape of Christianity. So you asked me the question at the very beginning, if there is a place for Christianity in Europe. So being a theologian by my training, the answer is yes. The question is, what kind of Christianity has place in Europe or in the world of today? And this is something I would like to explore with Patochka's help in this lecture tonight. To give you a brief outline uh, of major ideas I, I, I will be discussing in this lecture. Uh, I will start with Patochka's distinction between Europe and post-Europe, or maybe I should say with his diagnosis of our current situation, which he terms as post-European. From there, I would like to say a few words about after Christianity, because when I say after Christianity, I think of a certain category, of a certain way how to describe our context. And I will get later to a more precise definition. What, what do I mean when I say after Christianity? And finally, I would like to discuss or put on the table one very important idea of Jan Patochka developed, especially in his late writings in 1970s, and that's the solidarity of the shaken. And I hope to, to give you some, some links between the question of Christianity, Europe, after Christianity, post-Europe, and the solidarity of, of the shaken. So let's do this, yeah. And let me, let me begin with uh, one very important quote from Patochka's heretical essays. And I'm sure you all have heard this, this quote from David uh, maybe many times in, in, in the series of, 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 of lectures on Patochka, because that, that's one of the most fascinating and in, uh, most important quote where Patochka talks about Christianity explicitly. What he says in his uh, heretical essays, he says that Christianity remains thus far the greatest unsurpassed but also unfold through alarm that enabled humans to struggle against decadence. Uh, this quote uh, stands in the center of my book, and basically this book is a running interpretation and hermeneutics of this one particular idea. And uh, it's also a recurring thought and sort of a refrain of this lecture. And I will, I will return to this quote at the end of my paper. Uh, I think it's uh, 
maybe a few words about Patočka. You, you, you have heard uh, def definitely a lot about him during the series of the lectures. Uh, but maybe important thing is Patočka was born 90... 19, uh, 1907 and died 1977. So he really lived through all the turmoils of the 20th century. And um, interestingly, his first, even though he's not considered to be the philosopher of religion or a theologian or a philosopher who helps the theologian, yeah, it's, it's remarkable that his first published essay from 1929 was entitled Theology and Philosophy. And his last finished and published essay before his death in uh, in seventy seven uh, was uh, uh, was entitled on Masaryk's philosophy of religion. So you see, uh, it's not when you look at Patochka from a certain angle, it's not an entirely surprising thing to see him as a Christian thinker, uh, as for instance Jacques Derrida saw him and read him. Uh, and that's why Derrida's interpretation is not really welcomed by Czech scholars of Patočka, but that's, that's another topic. Let me, let me dive in to, to the first point of my paper, Europe and post-Europe. And right at the beginning, I would like to stress one thing. When Patočka talks about Europe, he doesn't talk primarily about a geopolitical unit. He doesn't talk about a geographical location, rather, Maybe we can say Europe is a certain culture, but even better, I would say, Patochka thinks of a certain mode of being. Europe is a certain mode of being. But what kind of, of being? You have heard from David, I'm sure, that according to Patochka, Europe originated in the ancient Greece. Europe uh, is, is born together with philosophy and history. These three are tied together, Europe, philosophy, and, and history. And of course, this culture has been cultivated, this Greek in, uh, in origin, this Greek culture has been then cultivated and transmitted by Christianity. Therefore, for Patochka, it's clear that Europe and Christianity belongs together. And not only as a civilization, not only civilizationally, not only uh, as a uh, as, as culture, but also philosophically. Also, and philosophically means not just in the realm of ideas, but when Patochka talks about philosophy, Patochka talks about vita philosophica, about philosophical life. Again, about a certain mode of being. So Europe is a mode of being which is lived through, thought through philosophically. In the center of this mode of being is Again, something uh, with which you are definitely familiar, caring for the soul. And what does it mean to care for the soul for Patochka? Let me quote from him. Care for the soul means that truth is something not given once and for all, nor merely a matter of observing and acknowledging the observed, but rather a lifelong inquiry, a self-controlling, self-unifying intellectual and vital practice. The care for the soul is thus what gave rise to Europe. So we see that for Patochka, Europe is a certain intellectual activity. There is a rational insight. There is care for one's being. And this care means that the human subject recognizes herself as, as a historical, as living in history, uh, as being in the movement, in the Aristotelian movement, going from one place to another, the way, somewhere. And maybe, again, you can, uh, you can notice that the original way how Christians called themselves was people of the way, people of a certain philosophical way, people being on the way, going somewhere. Um, we are in the Scruton Café, and it's a, it's a proper, uh, proper place to mention that Roger Scruton wrote an essay about myth uh, in Patochka, about the meaning of the myth and historicity in, in Patochka. And this is exactly, uh, this, is, this is a very important distinction, because uh, before Europe, before history, before philosophy, and also before Christianity, there was 
religion of myth. Religion which uh, is so, I can say, is, is either pre-programmed from the past or just directed to certain future, but everything is given. Huh? With Europe, with the rise of philosophy, and with the Christian cultivation of this uh, Greek tradition, these mythical structures, these, let's say, static structures of, of religion and society are removed or maybe re reconsidered, maybe even deconstructed and reshaped uh, in, in the form of religion, which is not static, which is on the way, which is, which is a movement, which is a move, uh, mode of being. Yet, of course, when we think of Europe as the care for the soul, we cannot take it as an idyllic structure. Uh, there are constant interruptions, constant recontextualizations of the actual content and meaning of this care for the soul. So for Patochka, this is not a fixed set of ideas when he talks about care for the soul. Again, it's more about the posture of, of, of our being in the world. Because, yeah, uh, in, in the Greek philosophy, the important thing is this, uh, this rational insight, this emancipation from, from fatum, from the fate which governs our life, to our individual ability to think, to be historical beings. In Christianity, of course, care for the soul is recontextualized and for, for centuries, presented and narrated as, uh, as care for the life to come, life after this, this life. In, in the Enlightenment, we can say with Patochka, this care for the soul is changed into um, the care for, for a reason, for, for, and the stress is put on this rational, rational insight. In existentialism, in Patochka's dear Heidegger, whom he read a lot, with whom he studied, uh, in, uh, in uh, Heidel, yeah, still, still Heidelberg, I believe. Uh, so uh, the, the care for the soul is more about care for death, but, but with death as the end, end, end point. Last great crisis of Europe for Patochka is modernity. And modernity here means modernity as it is defined by Husserl's crisis, where science and yeah, uh, reason is actually not venerated enough for, for, for Husserl. It's a crisis of reason. But also, Patochka takes into consideration Heidegger's uh, delineation of modernity, uh, the critique of techno scientific scientific mentality and the culture which both with Husserl and Heidegger Patochka would say leads us to wars and you heard many things about it from David and his interpretation uh, of the heretical essays in philosophy of history. I want to point out just one thing which is very crucial for Patochka for his rethinking and reconsidering the care for the soul and Christianity and that's Gestel. The, the, uh, the Heideggerian notion of, of Gestel, which he finds as, as the core of our crisis. And he says the following, and let me quote from him. In Gestel, the time of universal order, the alienation of humans culminates up to the point that everyone is basically just a function and the performance of this function. A human becomes, becomes one dimensional is deprived of its totality, is reduced to an object. In fact, it is not even an object. A human has not become a thing which can further be viewed from a different perspective and complement it. All this disappears and human beings become only an object of the order. That's for Patochka our crisis. That's why we need to, to think about Europe as post-Europe, post -Europe, because this is post-Europe for him. Uh, and the crisis of post-Europe is also the crisis of all those traditions which carried on care for the soul, not only Christianity, but also Christianity. So uh, when, we, when we say that we live after Europe, Patochka writes this book, Europa und nach Europa, 
post-Europe. It also means that our Christianity is after Christianity, nach Christentum, uh, post-Christianity. Post and not in the heretical essays, but uh, in the earlier text with a striking title, Super Civilization, and it's this contents, actually, uh, Patochka talks about, uh, not about war as something uh, which, yeah, as the outburst of this culture of post-Europe and, and gestel and objectification, mathemat uh, mathematization of, of human beings. He, he adds one thing which you can read in between the lines of heretical essays, but in the, in the text on super civilization, he, takes, uh, he says it quite explicitly that one of the main reasons why Europe is in the crisis is because of the removal of the so-called vertical thinking, that we think only horizontally. And he makes a nice distinction between the Greek notion of theoria, rational insight, however, rational insight, which takes into consideration not only the horizontality of, of our thinking, but also openness to, to, some, to, to, to the vertical direction of, of our intellect. And modern theory, the theory which is governed by, by Gestel with uh, the, the desire, with the will to master knowledge, to, to master not, and through knowledge, to master beings and actually turning beings into entities, so, so to say. Uh, in, in German, you, you can see the Heideggerian allusion between Sein und Seindes, of course. So, post Europe is also post Christianity or the Europe after Christianity. So, now to my second point after Christianity. Because um, when I now said that, probably when you hear after Christianity, you would quite logically think about this after in, in a chronological, diachronic understanding. And I, I used this idea, of course, and it's, it's the mainstream idea how to, how to understand uh, this post-Christian post -Christian situation of, of ours, uh, that we live after or within secularization, that we live uh, through the traditionalization, that we experience individualization of our lives, uh, which all affect um, uh, our understanding of, of Christianity. Uh, so there is a sense in our civilization of, the certain, uh, of a certain end of Christendom as civilization, as culture, as uh, as a monolith, definitely as a monolithic structure with often presented, I would say, in history, theological imperialism. So, yes, this is possible. And maybe, for instance, if you take Charles Taylor's Opus Magnum, Secular Age, he narrates this story. How, how it happened, how it happened that uh, a few centuries ago, it was almost impossible not to believe and now, suddenly, it's almost impossible to believe, to be, to be a Christian. But this is not uh, a perspective or the main perspective Patochka applies on the understanding of this category after of, of Christianity. So let me explain what do I mean when I talk about after Christianity and what Patochka means when he talks about this post-European, post uh, Christendom religion, which he, uh, at, the, at the beginning I said, he, he deems to be the greatest, unsurpassed, but also unthought through. So, to repeat very quickly, Europe is not civilization. Europe is a mode of being. So, in terms of analogy, Christianity is not a religion, not, or not only a religion. Christianity is also a way of being way of inhabiting the world. And when I say the world, uh, with Patochka, I have to clarify, I mean this world, this time and space, history, and our, our historicity and our embodied reality. So after Christianity signifies not the end, but a certain transformation, again, certain movement of Christianity 
certain recontextualization of its meaning, its content, and its way of being. So after, after Christianity, it's not a state. It's not only our historical situation which we can describe. It is, it is actually a challenge. It is a challenge to, to embrace the movement of Christianity. And with this movement of, of, uh, of the European religion, also the movement of, of Europe. A challenge uh, which is, in Patochka's view, explicated by the situation of, of Gestel, of techno-scientific modernity. But we can also add to that, because Patochka, of course, he died in 1977, but we can add to this, uh, this experience our, our own experiences. And recently, we, we have experienced quite many disturbing things. Uh, for example, pandemics, the war at the borders of this country. Uh, those are all very, very disturbing events, which uh, sets us, set us into movement, into movement somewhere. Uh, so, after Christianity and after Europe, for Patochka, consists not, not of a description of this reality or coming uh, yeah, into a certain theory of our culture. It is about questioning this reality from within our historical situation. And this questioning, this problematizing, this, this asking ourselves, where do we stand and what shall we do? Because it's an important question for Patochka. What, what shall we do? This is, in his opinion, an ever-present aspect of being Christian and being and being European. So after Christianity is a kind of repetition of Christianity, the Kierkegaardian repetition, I would say. Uh, it is not the return to something what we know from the past. It is not idealizing uh, earlier, um, earlier uh, ecclesiastical models or theological visions of Christianity. It is, it is rather, again, a movement. It is not a static static uh, static thing. Uh, and yeah, in Patochka's words, again, Christianity is the greatest and the unsurpassed, yet untaught through. And this untaught through, I think, is very important. This is actually the answer to this, to this question about which all Patochka's interpreter are wondering, how comes that a philosopher who was a baptized Catholic, who was a Christian, but never practicing, or at least never publicly practicing, never provoking with his religious beliefs, uh, the communist government, or never disturbing his, his, uh, his students with uh, whether he, he had or, or didn't have any, any religious convictions. We, 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 do not, we do not know much about this. But yeah, he still talks in the heretical essays about, about his greatest and the unsurpassed. And the answer why he sees Christianity uh, so, so high, so to say, is that because there is this untold through moment, this, this, this movement which does not call for some kind of completion of Christianity in our culture, but for an afterthought, for, for thinking once, once again. I would like to come to, to the central part of, of my paper, because at the beginning, I was asked whether there is place for Christianity in Europe. And Patochka doesn't doubt that there is place for Christianity uh, in Europe, in our culture. But the question is, what kind of Christianity that should be? What kind of care for the soul? What kind of an afterthought are we called to uh, reconsider or consider completely new in, in our situation, or in Patochka's situation, but I, st I still think that uh, Patochka's situation is sort of applicable to, to our situation. So I, I would like to now talk a bit about his central concept, the solidarity of the shaken belt. I say central, you will find only scattered notes of, of this, this concept, but this is definitely one of the most influential ideas of, of Patochka's. Uh, so first, I put here this little outline. First, I would like to talk a bit about this being shaken. What does it mean to be 
to be shaken. Then I would like to say a few words about the word solidarity, because the solidarity uh, in Patoch, uh, for, for Patochka is something very different from, from the mainstream understanding of solidarity. And finally, I hope to connect this with Christianity and, and Europe. So being shaken, solidarity of the shaken, solidarity of the shaken, you, you hear solidarity uh, uh, presupposes a community, right? So, but community of, of whom? Uh, of those who are shaken. So who, what does it mean to be shaken? Who is the one who is, who is shaken? I talked about Gestel, this enframing, this uh, objectification of, of being human. Uh, but more concretely, I talked about pandemics. I mentioned pandemics. I, I mentioned the war. We, we are still having in, in Europe. All those are external expressions which evoke the situation of radical disturbance. It is something coming from outside to, to us, disturbing us, making something, something with us. And perhaps this is this being shaken. Yes, but again, Patochka has in mind something different or something more precise. When he talks about being shaken, he doesn't talk about primarily what comes from outside to us, but about what is within us, what's, what is inside. So being shaken, in his opinion, is very existential, ontological experience, experience which every single human being has. The loss of meaning, feeling the weight of existence, asking questions about the world around us. In one word, just realizing our finitude, our precarious situation, that we are stretched between the birth and death. This means for Patochka being shaken. And the person who thinks, who reflects on this, is in his opinion not an intellectual, but a spiritual person, he says. He has this, this wonderful essay, sp intellectual and a spiritual person, and he distinguishes these two precisely on this question, whether we only analyze the world external and with an, with an attempt to, to provide explanation or theory, or whether we look in, inside ourselves and realize that, um, that the human life, that the, the, the first experience of our, our human situation is actually being, being shaken. So wars, pandemics, um, gestel, techno-scientific culture, whatever, explicates the peculiar situation of human condition that is being shaken. But being shaken is not the effect of those, those causes. Rather, there is being shaken. Every single human being is in the condition of being shaken. It's an ontological category. Or, to put it in different words, it is, it is sort of grammar, grammar of our experience which we share. Be, being European, being not European, being Christian, being not Christian. It is a universal category, however, without neglecting the particular experience. So, I stop with being shaken now, solidarity. What is that? Originally, solidarity means something like the responsibility for the whole. The, by the whole, I mean a tribe, a group of people, a nation, for instance. Solidarity implies the liability for, for others that we we do see the needs of those who are next to, next to us. But solidarity, as you can hear uh, from the word, presupposes a certain solidity, a certain unity, a certain common ground. So often you find solidarity among fellow Romans or Christian brothers and sisters. Uh, we, we talk about the national solidarity. Eh? This is all, this all implies certain solidity, that we have something in common. 
problem, of course, with this uh, concept of solidarity is that it can be, doesn't have to be, but it can be exclusivistic. It can leave, leave out who are not like us for whatever reason. But I don't want to, want to go into that distraction. I want to share with you Patochka's idea of solidarity, which is a solidarity without solidity. And this is a solidarity which, for Patochka, centers around the, this internal conflict of every human being, this, solid, this experience of being, being shaken. It is a solidarity brought about by existential upheaval and disorientation, not by sharing something, but in a sense, by sharing nothing. It is solidarity beyond solidity. This is solidarity of the shaken. There is something in common, but this something in common is, is this being shaken, this experience, which can have different contents, different meanings for different people, but still creates a certain universal grammar on which we can, we can unite and look for solutions. Patochka says then that this solidarity of the shaken can and must create a spiritual authority, become a spiritual power that could drive the warring world to some restraint, rendering some acts and measures impossible. So this is the quote from the heretical essays. So he refers to this warfare uh, of, of Europe in which we still find ourselves. But um, the important thing is this challenge of creating spiritual authority. It has a potential to become a spiritual power, empowering real embodied persons, and thus create a community, a historical community, community which is really embodied in time and space, asking pertinent questions and looking for solutions. So Christianity as the solidarity of the shaken. I've already said that this meaning of uh, Christianity being unsurpassed and the greatest is for Patochka not about a theological triumphalism. It is about uh, being constantly an afterthought, an unthought. And the solidarity of the shaken, therefore, is not the completion of Christianity. It is the realization of this thinking through of Christianity. This is, it is a community which carries on, on, on this constant afterthought in given historical conditions and deciding according to those historical conditions for what is good and what is wrong. You can take Patochka's late engagement with Charter 77, which cost his life in the end, as precisely an example of, of, of this, as this, as the materialization of the solidarity of the shaken. Following certain grammar with people with whom he had nothing in common, but standing up for, for a cause. And of course, Patochka does not make this link between Christianity and the solidarity of the shaken so explicit as I'm trying to do in my forthcoming book, and as I try to argue right, right now. But I think when we take into consideration Patochka's premises that Europe is not just a location, it's not just a culture, it's a mode of being. Christianity is not just a religion, it's not a myth at all, it's, it's a movement of being, it's, it's, a, it's a way of, of living and inhibiting this, this world. So his challenge towards the end of his life to, to embrace this solidarity of the shaken as a certain uh, spiritual power, I, I see this as, as a viable and even better as a credible way for Christianity in, in this world. And it can, mean, it can mean different things at different places, but there is certain universality in, in, this, in this claim. 
that we can relate to, to each other, to each other through the experience of, of being shaken. And our community, our Christian community, can, can embody, uh, embody this, this experience and materialize it as a, as a space and time of, for, this, for this experience. And of course, in, in grappling with this experience, then, then elaborate on certain conclusions in given historical, historical conditions. So after Christianity is, uh, is not a new religious structure for Christianity, to say it with Pavlička. It is, it, is, uh, it is not a kind of elitist uh, knowledge about the shape of Christianity either. It is an awareness of being, being shaken and accepting this universal human experience as a grammar in common for creating a credible community. Credible community which uh, does not have to resign of, uh, on its fundamental, fundamental convictions, but which can, which can still be open, not exclusivistic, open uh, to, to every kind of human, human situation and looking for the solution in, in those situations. I think, yeah, let me finish. Once again, with, with this refrain, Christianity remains thus far the greatest unsurpassed, but also unfold through a land that enabled humans to struggle against decadence. And I hope Christianity will continue to do that in contemporary Europe. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Martin, very much for these fascinating remarks. Now we turn to uh, Peter Pastor's intervention. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I must say that I am a little bit uh, uh, worried about uh, talking here, because, uh, especially because uh, I am stepping in uh, for a friend of mine, Balaj Mezei, who uh, is perhaps uh, the most serious uh, philosopher of religion in Hungary in my generation. Uh, and uh, the, the, more, the more important thing or that concerns uh, this uh, uh, lecture is that uh, he started his career uh, as a writer on Patochka. Uh, his first major book uh, was uh, a discussion of uh, Patochka's phenomenolog mm. phenomenological approach. Uh, so uh, I sort of feel a little bit um, um, dismayed to uh, to talk here. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I spoke to Balaj uh, about uh, what he might have uh, wanted to say, uh, and I thought that uh, it might be opportune to uh, to present in some way uh, some of his ideas. Uh, that, or, at, or, or in fact, uh, questions uh, that you might wish to answer. Uh, the, the perhaps uh, most important question that I understood from what he said uh, is uh, the, the idea of Europe uh, re relating to a more uh, pertinent historical situation are, are uh, Central East European uh, uh, condition. Uh, whether uh, the philosophy of Patochka could be termed uh, as a Central East European uh, philosophy. Uh, one of uh, Balaji's uh, ideas is that, is that uh, uh, in spite of the various uh, narratives of Hungarian philo philosophical tradition, uh, uh, Hungarian philosophy, the most powerful strain in the Hungarian philosophical tradition is a, is a religious philosophy. 
and perhaps uh, you might you might uh, enlarge on this. But uh, there is another uh, problem uh, with the Central East European experience. Uh, when we discussed with David, well, first about inviting Bollage to speak, he first of all was a little bit diffident. He, he said he was, he was sort of beyond Patochka now. Uh, he, he, he seems to have uh, been interested in, in, uh, in uh, finding something further. And I asked about this uh, uh, from Balage, and uh, he said that, that the primary uh, reason for, for his going beyond Patochka was that he seems to feel uh, that, that this oeuvre uh, was not complete. Uh, Patochka had to teach uh, under Nazism, he had to teach or was not allowed to teach under Nazism. The same uh, occurred during communism. Uh, after uh, the, the short brief period of the Prague Spring, he, he did have a chance to appear publicly. He even was allowed to, to go abroad to mm -hmm. speak in Cologne, uh, uh, where, where uh, he, he gave, a, gave a lecture. This is just an aside. Uh, he gave a lecture about Husserl, and he, he sort of uh, couldn't uh, completely finish his lecture because he turned very emotional and cried. Uh, uh, this is 1969, after the, the, before before everyone uh, the the Hussak regime started to uh, arrest uh, the intellectuals. Uh, so, uh, but that's just a, a side issue. The, the question is this: this experience that uh, that um, uh, Eastern European, Central Eastern European intellectuals. Have a have a history seems to seems to crack uh, their their oeuvre in two or or leaves it incomplete. I mean, this is a, a fundamental Hungarian experience uh, with our intellectuals. Uh, do you have any comments on this? Uh, um, and uh, this uh, relates, uh, I suppose. Uh, I'm not not the one to interpret uh, Meze Balage here, so I will I will go on to my own uh, mm -hmm. uh, ideas, which 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 is in part is a repetition of our uh, discussion last time, because uh, the issue of history uh, uh, being a very a very uh, uh, difficult uh, or a shaking experience. Uh, for uh, Central Eastern European beings uh, is the one uh, history in general seems to be the one that that creates uh, the mode of being uh, uh, Patochka seems to support and it seems to find the 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 great intellectual tradition of uh, Europe uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this movement, this Aristotelian mo motion, uh, as opposed to myth, uh, but I have a problem with 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 uh, this I, this uh, uh, going beyond myth in order to have a historical existence, and I I uh, I mentioned the last time we spoke about this, uh, the Hungarian. Uh, uh, student of myth, ancient myth, uh, Karl Kerény, mm -hmm. uh, who studied uh, Greek mythology, and in one of his his very important uh, studies, he recreates the Ulysian uh, mystery, which is uh, the fundamental Greek myth. And the the interesting point is that before. Uh, the Battle of Salamis, the Greek uh, warriors 
were introduced, were initiated into the Elysian myth, the mystery, where, whereafter, uh, they, through this experience of myth, they defeated uh, the, the, uh, uh, the attack by the ancient uh, uh, tyranny, uh, the, the, the ancient uh, uh, promoter of perhaps uh, the understanding, the static understanding of myth. So can you enlarge on this problem of, of uh, myth as opposed to uh, this rational uh, uh, understanding? So this is this is uh, one of the one of the issues that I wanted to ask, and then the other uh, question that that uh, that uh, arose uh, while you spoke about this uh, unthought through elan. Mm -hmm. uh, because there seemed to me to be a, perhaps a contradiction or a or a or there is a there is a, a a a starting point from one stage to another, in that uh, the unthought throughness might also be a, a kind of a disestablishment, mm -hmm. an an uninstitution uninstitutionalized uh, approach, and this is where perhaps his relation to Christianity. Uh, uh, may come in whether whether is this unthought throughness uh, related to his his non practicing uh, Christianity? His he, perhaps is this is this uh, a kind of uh, uh, critique of of established institutionalized religion, or a kind of uh, or a a, a kind of surpassing or a pointing beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, uh, this is to be understood within the context that established religion under communism is uh, attacked. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, uh, from a post-communist uh, situation, this uh, uh, this established point might be of interest mm -hmm. uh, for a for a, uh, a, 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 a an understanding after Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank th you very much. Thank, thank you, Dusar. Excellent <coughs> questions. Excellent question, and we can talk for hours about each of them, but I, I promise to, to be brief. Okay. Okay, because we want to take many questions from the floor. Okay, okay, just so. Europe, your, your, your first remark about, about, uh, about Europe and the Central European experience. Uh, maybe you, you know the debate which happened after Patochka's death between Václav Havel and Milan Kundera about mm -hmm. stolen Central Europe. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, we are aware. Uh, where Kundera says, we as Central Eastern Europeans, we were sort of yeah, put, uh, put away from, from the map of, of the world oh, and off, became yeah. just Eastern Europeans with this evaluative mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh, yes. pathos, yeah, which, <laughs> which is part of that, uh, which we can feel until to today, I think. And, but then on the other hand, there was Václav Havel who said, no, 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 there is just Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is idea he took from Patochka, because Patochka says uh, uh -huh. something uh, very interesting. He says, Europe stands only on one pillar, and that's the Greek one. And that's, that's, that's not, this does not, doesn't exclude Christianity, because Christianity is, mm -hmm. is a natural continuation of, uh, of, of this one. But, but important for, for Patochka is exactly that he, uh, he experienced Europe. He wanted to talk about Europe as a European philosopher, and in uh, his uh, uh, little pamphlet, Was in the Czechen, What are the Czechs, which is an amazing critique of, 
of being Czech, <laughs> but written in German, which is which is absolutely <laughs> stunning about that. It is published in Hungarian. <laughs> Uh, and sells and he, very well. And he <laughs> says, there he says one, one thing which relates to your question about the religious experience as well. Uh, that, mm, you know, whenever we, and we Czechs, uh, he, he, uh, he means uh, at this, this point, we uh, were part of the mainstreams uh, of European thought. Uh, it was, we were always Europeans. We were always European. Uh, and real Europeans, not just second-class Europeans. Mm -hmm. The problem starts when we Czechs uh, want to create our little and cozy and enclosed uh, Czech state. Yeah. So there, in this sense, he, he takes very positively the Reformation. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. takes very positively Jan Hus, but mm -hmm. he doesn't take what, uh, very positively the Hussite church. And mm -hmm. what, what, what followed as a national church, because he, he sees uh -huh. the, the loss of this u universal European idea means a certain the creation of certain provincialism for, for, for the, the same is uh, his his narration of our Saint Petron, Saint Wenceslas, who, who was killed by, uh, by his brother. And of course, the idea of, of this uh, Myth, if you if you like, is that uh, Saint Wenceslas was the one who, who was paying the tribute to Germans, who was probably speaking uh, German, and his brother. That was this real Czech, right? This this Slavic hero. Eh? And Patočka says precisely this uh, sort of rational, diplomatic Wenceslas, who want to be in dialogue in, in direct connection to Europe as a whole, that's, that's the way. Uh, and that's why Charles IV, the, the Roman emperor and Czech, Czech king, he, it's his hero. Masaryk is his hero because they do not want to create just self-enclosed Czech state, but those political units, uh, the Holy Roman Empire, of course, but also the first Czechoslovakian Republic included different uh, ethnicities, nationalities, different, uh, yeah, three million German-speaking people during the, the first, first Republic. So, so, so this is like his, uh, his idea of, of Europe. There is just Europe and either we are part of it or we are withdrawing from it. Or, of course, it, it happened to us that we were, yeah, somehow thrown apart from, from, from the heart of Europe, but not as a, for Patočka, there is nothing like a specific Central European experience. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a part of, a, of this big mm -hmm. European experience. And this Greek pillar, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it, it relates to myth. You, you, uh, the question about myth you ask, which is an excellent question. Of course, Patočka is not so schematic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. There is, there is mm -hmm. certain myth he criticizes. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe the mainstream conception of the myth, yeah. uh -huh. but but then he he recognizes uh, something what we may call the truth of myths, yeah, and myths which are not just mm -hmm. simply uh, schematic and as opposed to histo historicity. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in his postscript to to his ha habilitation, uh, the world as a natural problem, which uh, this postscript he wrote thirty three years later, and part of this postscript is the so-called myth of God-man. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is his allusion and interpretation on Christ and, and Christ's uh, incarnation and passion. Patočka is excellent in avoiding uh, naming Christ. You, you, you won't find Jesus uh, of Nazareth or Jesus Christ in his uh, published writings, maybe in his notes, but you know he talks about mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth all, all the time. And he uses this myth and of course, mm -hmm. in a very, very positive, very positive mm -hmm. way. Uh -huh. So it is not just just uh -huh. schematic, uh -huh. but he sees certain tendencies in mythical thinking, or uh, yeah, in in a certain kind of mythical thinking, but not in myth the Greek myth and block. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, his work not being finished. Of course, it's it's an unsystematic work of mm -hmm. many projects many projects mm -hmm. which are unfinished. Uh, that's why it's very interesting to, to study Patočka and to think with Patočka beyond Patočka, because mm -hmm. it, it opens uh, not only in phenomenology, 
uh, but also in the philosophy of history, in, uh, in his interpretation of, of the art, for instance, many, many possible ways uh, how, to, how to conceive certain problems. But yes, his work is not finished, and one cannot be just Patochkin. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, if one is just Patochki and then uh, he or she is doing archival work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but there is much more and, and it's, it's challenging, yeah. it's challenging. And uh, I'm thought through, that's, that's a very, very good observation how we can we can interpret this until through. And certainly Patochka read, for instance, Bultmann and Karl Barth. So he was aware of this debate about bad religion mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and yeah Christianity is something different from, from from religion and there can be something what you've suggested uh, a bit of institutional critique of, mm -hmm. of, of the church because of its collaboration maybe uh, with, with the communist communist regime yeah mm -hmm. with, with its impotence to to really uh, mm -hmm. create uh, opposition, which would which would be working, so it can be there. Mm -hmm. But I think his main point is not in contrast to some contemporary thinkers, uh, those continental philosophers of religion who study religion, who study Christianity, who reread Christianity in order to find a purer version of Christianity, or more originary mm -hmm. Christianity, or better Christianity, or not, not non-metaphysical or anti-metaphysical mm -hmm. Christianity, you, you name it. Yeah? You mm -hmm. have all those attempts today. And I think Patochka is trying to actually do something quite opposite. And that is, he, he talks about this pointing beyond itself, but not pointing beyond itself, like to flee from this reality of Christianity we mm -hmm. have. I would say that if we pay attention to his uh, his remarks on Christianity, he's, he's for this dirty Christianity. Eh? Christianity, uh, which is not ideal structure. Mm -hmm. uh, and this solidarity of, of shaken enables people actually to, to accept this. So, uh, so I would say that for, for him, Christianity is really about this going to, uh, yeah, uh, to tax collectors. And they are that, that's the right thing to do because they are part of this Christianity, those mm -hmm. collectors. Yeah? Uh, he doesn't consider uh, consider himself, Patochka, I mean, as as an uh, enlightened intellectual who now sees how to think through Christianity in order to mm -hmm. get to, to a better better version of Christianity. He wants to think from this particular situation, from this Christianity we have. Uh, but think it again and again in our concrete situation, not in, not in order to abolish this kind of Christianity or that, that kind of Christianity, mm -hmm. or to create something like uh, John Caputo would say, to, to find the undeconstructible in, in Christianity, <laughs> in, in, but deconstruct everything, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Trinity, that's a, that's a construction, so we have to deconstruct it. Uh, this is not Patochka's way. Patochka says uh, that dogma is not the end of the debate, but the very beginning of the debate. And I find this fascinating. Uh -huh. he, he says, dogma is codified to, to delineate the borders of our discussion, our debate, in order to have this debate, in, he, in order to think through this uh, alarm, which mm -hmm. enables us to, to struggle again, mm -hmm. against the current. So, so his, there can be part of, of that, what you've mm -hmm. said, definitely, uh, mm -hmm. in some yeah, his, his historical contextual conditions, but his aim is not to create some kind of better Christianity, mm -hmm. some kind of Christianity uh -huh. without religion or uh, faith without belief or belief without faith or, mm -hmm. or just a, a immanent community. I think he just want to say, yeah, we have to realize this, Christ this is Christianity. We have to think it through, but I am a philosopher, no, priest theologians. You, you have to take the challenge. Yeah, that, 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 would be, that would be his, his, uh, his nice. conclusion, I think. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. It falls to me. Thank you so much, Martin, for these uh, wonderful replies to this fascinating lecture. And it falls to me to ask one final question. Um, and I don't want to be too elevated, but at the same time, it was a very, it was a very edifying lecture. And I, I suppose as we, as we come back to this claim that Christianity is greatest unsurpassed and unthought through Elan for the struggle against decadence. One term we discussed in, in Vienna together 
was love, which is a term that doesn't appear very often in Patochka's work, but as some of you may recall, at the very end of his lectures, he even refers to love of the enemy in his reflection on war at the very end of the radical essays. So my final question is whether solidarity of the shaken could be seen as an attempt to philosophically think through the command to love or, or the injunction to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think this is this is a potential way how to how to think it through with Patočka beyond Patočka because as you said Patočka mentions love only briefly of course it's an important philosophical concept it's important theological concept as well yeah? but he doesn't give uh, very concrete content to 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 this love but I think theologically if we can try to formulate certain ecclesiologic certain fundamental ecclesiology with Patočka's uh, solidarity of the shaken as the first word, not the last, but the first word of, uh, of Christian uh, theology in this respect, it can be done the same uh, with, with the notion of love. And to start maybe thinking with Patočka, the intersubjective love, uh, the, the love between persons, real embodied uh, agents, uh, because that's, that's his uh, his uh, aim, uh, all, he's constantly aiming at thinking concrete embodied people, not abstract uh, classes, not, uh, not broad uh, yeah, political concept. That's why he's hesitant to, to give some concrete political solutions because yeah, sometimes we, we tend to think about great ideas with forgetting people who are, who are involved in, in, in those ideas. But think through love can be, yeah, does threaten the kind of redemption of, of this uh, deficiency in, in thinking politically with Patočka, because Patočka is well received among political philosophers. That's, that's interesting. Huh? But yeah, maybe this would put all the, the, the whole discussion on earth and give it some 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 roots yeah please join me in thanking mark thank you